I would have thrown hands at this man. But also, grow a pair, you know? Ow. My nail fell off. I gotta go glue it back on. Damn it. One second, folks. Crisis averted. We're back, baby. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my July wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 15 books this month, which is insane because I was working 40 hours a week for this entire month. So when I did this, I don't know. But I will be splitting it up into three different parts, five books each part. So this is part one. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read was Deep in Providence by Riss M. Nielsen, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows four best friends, Milani, Inez, Jasmine, and Natalie, who are all living in Providence, Rhode Island. When Jasmine is suddenly killed by a drunk driver, the remaining girls turn to magic to bring her spirit back, and it's like the story of that. The story is told in alternating point of views between Natalie, Inez, and Milani. It was a really great way to get to know the girls on a personal level as well as their relationship with each other and Jasmine. I enjoyed that the three girls had their own personal issues that they were dealing with as well as their grief over losing Jasmine. The reason I only ended up giving it three stars is because I felt that at parts it really began to drag and I felt that a lot of it could have been taken out in order to move the plot along and we still would have gotten the same story. It does deal with some more difficult topics such as drug abuse, drug addiction, as well as overdose. It has a miscarriage in it. There is sexual assault. So definitely just be aware of those topics going into it if those happen to be triggers for you. But overall, I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It was alright. The next book that I read was The Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a treasure hunter named Fee and a huntswoman named Shane who team up to find a long lost treasure. Along the way, they come face to face with a cursed prince who has been waiting a hundred years for the kiss that will awaken him, and it's the story of that. This has been marketed as a gender-swapped Indiana Jones meets Sleeping Beauty, which I was a big fan of. It did take me a little while to get into the story, but once I became invested in it, I really enjoyed it. I think that the world building was very interesting. I really liked learning more about how Briar's curse affected the entire kingdom. There are flashbacks from each character that I think really helped move the story along. I think that it really helped build the world up and let us learn more about each of the characters individually. I like the alternating point of view between Shane and Fee, and I also liked how we got some chapters from Briar Rose as well. I think I was more intrigued by Shane's storyline. I just found it to be more interesting and I really love learning more about her backstory. I will say one of the reasons I gave it a 3.5 instead of a higher rating is because of both of the romances. I just found them to be very insta-lovey, which I am usually not a fan of, but they did grow on me as the story progressed and they began interacting with each other more. I was definitely more interested in the friendship between Fee and Shane rather than the romances. I really do wish that there was more of a focus on that aspect of the story rather than the romances, but overall I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was still a really fun story. The next book that I have is Home Field Advantage by Dahlia Adler. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. This book follows Amber, who wants nothing more than to become the head cheerleader next year at her high school, and she will stop at nothing in order to secure that spot. When the quarterback of the football team is tragically killed in a car accident, the new quarterback arrives, and they just so happen to be a very cute girl named Jax, who Amber begins to fall for. Without the support of her team, Amber must decide who she is going to cheer for and if she is going to jeopardize her spot as cheer captain. I actually listened to this on audiobook in one sitting. It flew by and was a very fun read as long as you could get past the misogynistic homophobic assholes on the cheer squad and the football team. 
I really enjoyed the dual point of view between Amber and Jax. I listened to it on audio so I found it very easy to tell the two characters apart because they did use different voices for each of the characters but I do know that some people on Goodreads saying that it was very difficult to tell the two apart. I really liked how both of the girls ended up growing so much as the story progressed and they began to really stand up for what they believed in rather than just going with the peer pressure of their friends. Jax was definitely my favorite of the two characters. I found her to be very relatable and you couldn't help but root for her. I will say that Amber was a little bit harder to like and she did rub me the wrong way for a good majority of the book but I do understand where she was coming from and how she didn't want to step out of line with her friends, but also grow a pair, you know? The majority of the side characters were complete assholes and I hated them. And it was a little bit disappointing that they didn't really have any character development whatsoever by the end of the book. I will say that I adored Amber's mom though. She was openly bisexual and was just such a great support system for Amber without being too overbearing. She really let her come to the, her own decisions in what she needed to do. But overall, I think that this was a really cute read with some deeper topics that that were covered very well so I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. The next book that I have is Dream On by Angie Hawkman. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of five stars. So this book follows Cass Walker who was in a car accident that caused her to be in a coma for six days. When she wakes up she's searching her hospital room for her loving boyfriend named Devin Bloom. She becomes very confused when she is told by her friends and family that this man does not exist. Two years later and after some very extensive therapy, Cass decides that she is finally ready to rid herself of these vivid memories of Devin and finally start her law career once again. To congratulate herself on her success, she decides to stop off at a local flower shop where she runs into none other than Devin Bloom himself and the story takes off from there. I flew through this book in two sittings. I found it very easy to read, but I do think that it was a very average read in my opinion. I do think that it would be a pretty great rom movie though. I will say that the love triangle was pretty well done but I despise Devin. He made me so angry with the way that he treated Cass especially when he was in front of his friends. I would have thrown hands at this man. I was definitely Team Perry all the way. I just loved how passionate he was about the flower shop and how desperately he wanted to save it. My favorite relationship was not a romantic one. It was between Cass and her best friend Brie. I just thought they were so supportive of each other and they just made me so happy every scene that they were together in. I really hope that Angie Hawkman does like a spin-off series where it follows Brie because she was just such a sweetheart and I really want to see where she and another character ends up. So... Angie Hawkman, if you're watching this, please give me a spinoff of Bree's story. I only ended up giving it a 3.5 because one, I thought it was average, like I said, but I was also able to tell one of the like big reveals very, very quickly in the story. Like as soon as this character was revealed, I was like, oh, this is what is going to end up happening. And I was right. So that was really sucky. I also ended up giving it a lower rating because I was not a fan of a way that a character was villainized because they had a miscarriage. I just didn't think that that was cool. So... Yeah, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was your average rom-com. And then the final book that I will be talking about for this part of my wrap-up is Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows 17-year-old Ivy, who on her way home from a party one day discovers a mysterious naked woman in the road. In order to avoid hitting this woman, the car swerves, ending in an accident and causing the woman to flee into the woods. Ivy ends up chasing her into the woods and discovers that this woman actually knows her name and is somehow linked to her mother and the mysterious secrets that she is hiding. So this started off very slow, which made it very difficult to become invested in the story. It follows two alternating timelines, the past when Ivy's mother was a teenager and first discovering magic, and then the present when Ivy is trying to unravel all of her mother's secrets. I think that the best part of this story was Ivy and Dana's very complex mother-daughter relationship, although I will say that I was not a fan of a lot of the choices that Dana made, but you know, a mom's gonna do what she thinks is best, even though 
It definitely wasn't. I think that the mystery aspect of this book was a lot of fun, but I do think it was pretty obvious what the outcome was going to be, so I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first five books that I read for the month of July 2022. If you're interested in the other 10 books, I will leave those videos down below. Once they are uploaded, you can check them out. Let me know what you read this month and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Why are you still filming? I pressed the button.